What's wrong with this picture? Effing the ineffable. First section, the ineffable God. Let's start with a basic assumption of Christianity, that the one true God is beyond human understanding. God is beyond all talk, pictures, and even thought. Anything less is merely a God, an object within the sphere of human thinking and understanding, even invention. Yet we need to talk about and to God. So we need to imagine the person on the other end of the telephone. Word pictures help. Before Jesus' time, Jewish people had stopped calling God by name, Yahweh, but substituted Lord. This is still one of the commonest word pictures for God. God is the boss, the Lord or King. Because Jesus often called God Father or My Father, this is also a very common word picture. For more on this, wait for post 3 in this series, or see the section Jesus called God Father in the book. It's worth asking ourselves about our favourite word pictures and examining how they limit our thinking about God. What's wrong with this picture? Most of us know with our heads that images of God as an old, or at least a mature, man with a white beard are not true. Yet the wording of our prayers and sermons often conjures up Ian McKellen's Gandalf or Michelangelo's God rather than any less gendered or aged image. Our talk makes those of us who are theologically literate incoherent. We believe with our heads that God is beyond gender, but our ears or lips tell us he is male. There's a problem using he for God. It sounds male. But what alternatives are there? In the written version of this I used he with scare quotes. What works for you? The pastoral problem. It can be worse. If a human father was a less than stellar example, calling God father, but not mother, risks a warped view of God. So, for example, find it difficult to believe that God loves her despite her failings. She tries but can't achieve the standards she believes God requires. Jesus' parable of the lost son in Luke 15 gives us a different picture of God as father. But although she knows the story, her human father gets in the way and she loses the experience. The theological problem. Michelangelo's God is male. Some Christians argue from the supposed maleness of God often nuancing their language in sophisticated ways, to the inability of women to properly represent God. C.S. Lewis is a surprising example of this move. Why, should, he wrote, should a woman not in this sense represent God? Certainly not because she is necessarily or even probably less holy or less charitable or stupider than a man. In that sense she may be as godlike as a man, and a given woman much more so than a given man. The sense in which she cannot represent God will perhaps be plainer if we look at the thing the other way round. Suppose the reformer stops saying that a good woman may be like God and begins saying that God is like a good woman. Suppose he says that we might just as well pray to our mother which art in heaven as to our father. Suppose he suggests that the incarnation might just as well have taken a female as a male form and the second person of the Trinity be as well called the daughter as the son. Suppose finally that the mystical marriage were reversed that the church were the bridegroom and Christ the bride. As always, C.S. Lewis makes his point with admirable clarity. He is also aware that language shapes our thought. Yet he is not faithful to an important scripture passage here. In Genesis 1.27 we read of the creation of humankind. Adam in Hebrew here is not the name of the first human, but has its more usual sense as people or a person. Explicitly this humankind is identified as male and female in the image of God. Now Genesis 1 to 3 is the foundation of scripture so how can Lewis equate this claim male and female in the image of God with his own that somehow men are more in the image of God. God and Gods. Thinking in pictures is dangerous. All picture thought illuminates some aspects of truth but ignores others. If God or the one true God transcends our categories in pictures then we are left with little to say. Some atheist thinkers as well as many believers take the pictures too seriously. The god they talk about is the sort of superpower that the ancient gods represented. Zeus or Baal throwing thunderbolts around, strong but limited by the human capacity to picture them. We need pictures as we try to F the ineffable, but they're dangerous and never tell the whole story. In this series I'll be suggesting that if we use motherly pictures alongside fatherly ones as we think and speak about the Christian God, we will be distorting God less. Bye for now.